Look at all these girls. We've got Makoto, we've got Jun, and then we've got uh, the rest. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be talking about reroll tier priority list, whatever. I know there are going to be a lot of you that are looking to reroll, especially if you dumped like 300 rolls into the Jun banner and you only got Jun. That's, a, that's kind of a feels bad, man. I've talked about this in another video. Yes, it is potentially worth it if you've actually dumped like 300 rolls into the into the Jun banner if you, and you only got Jun. Here I'll show you a screenshot of my friend who rerolled. He, in one day, made it back to rank one arena in a new bracket. There's just a lot of pros and cons. Consider it if you did get cucked by RNG because it's really real. Regardless, check out that video, see how you feel about it, but good luck. Let's get into the tier list. So again, these are just my assumptions and my opinion, especially in terms of the priority. What's most important is that you read the rationale. The rationale is the key to how I arrived at that priority. If you actually believe in something else, then you go for the other thing. For example, like these two may be a priority zero, but really if you don't give a shit about like clan battle, then you go for, for example, Jun and Monica or something like that. If you know that you're an arena focus player, you go for, let's say Hatsune and Ana to build the Mage Melt comp. And again, these evaluations are in my opinion, based on the utility, the rarity and the usefulness. And when I say rarity, I don't mean the two or three stars or whatever, actually it is. Only reroll for three stars, never reroll for two or under. What, but what I really meant was how farmable they are on top of being a three star. So let's start with the first two, Makoto and Jun. You can see that they're a priority zero. This is kind of like when I would say Risimara or, or rerolling is finished. If you hit Makoto in the first roll, the guaranteed three stars and then you hit Jun in one of the next like 20 or 30 or whatever rolls you get, I think that's the optimal reroll. It's the best reroll for clan battle, but also if you're undecided because Makoto and Jun, both of them are very hard to get outside of actually rerolling for them. For Makoto, you can only get her from clan battle coins, which are going to be not very easy to get at all. Let me tell you that. And Jun, you can only get her from rolling up until World 13, where you can actually farm her hard shards. She does eventually get an event where you can actually farm her partially, but that's a long way away. Now, in terms of why they are good, Makoto, you guys already know it man makoto physical defense down combine that with other physical attackers boom you got big physical damage i've talked about it so many times if i say it again i'll feel like i'm one of those repeating youtubers okay but let's talk about her also in pve guys she sucks ass in pve like in the in the story mode <laughs> but for bosses of course she's extremely good because she does the defense down thing but for pve in particular like she does she just kind of dies sometimes um like, like she's not she's not bad but she's just not very good okay she's super squishy and when i was pushing through story she just kept getting targeted by the pve mobs and she just kept dying so it's really sad as for jun it's actually a little bit different jun is actually really good everywhere else as well so between makoto and jun i actually might go jun jun's sheer utility she's got like the absorption shield she's got the heal she's got the defense down and the fact that she's a tank makes her more important than makoto especially in the early parts of the game tanks are way more important because like if you're tank dies, pretty much everything else falls. Therefore, even if you don't intend to clan battle, I think that she is still extremely useful and priority one, especially because of the PVE. She's quite good for arena. She will carry you in dungeon story, she'll carry you in everything else. Again, in my opinion, if you're undecided, you go for these two. If you're wanting clan battle, absolutely no brainer, you go for these two. And if you're going for arena, honestly, I would still say go for these two because they are just so hard to get. Whereas the other ones are actually, a lot of them are farmable. And as you can see from one of the people in my discord who did the um, arena thing like he he could do it he could hit rank one as long as you kind of know what you're doing monica's next and monica's like towards the top of this next priority like kind of bracket so monica uh, the big thing about monica is that she gives your entire team like 20 seconds of like some god tier damage bullshit right increased attack speed increased damage it's it's just so big especially in arena right those first 20 seconds could definitely shape how the rest of the battle goes it could mean that miyako falling because your mages had enough time to freaking cut that miyako she's also really good at pve but but for clan battle in particular, because it lasts a minute 30, then her utility kind of like drops off at about 20 seconds when she loses her buff. She then becomes like a support unit who just stuns or attempts to stun the boss, which you know you can't do. The thing is with Monica is that she competes with Tamaki and Reno in the battle arena shop, uh, the coin. But generally, if we're talking between Monica versus Reno, Monica definitely has priority because she can be used in like more generic comps. Reno is a very specific character, and I guess we'll get into that when we get into her. Hatsune, she, um, <laughs> this description is very very accurate she makes me cry every day in arena she smokes the physical attackers of your team so for me 
me, I always forget and I put Makoto in my team and within like two or three shots, my Makoto dies. It's 4v5 and I've lost. She's got an AoE UB, she's got a stun and she's got like a priority attack on physical attackers. So like she cripples both attacking and defending teams. She is, however, in terms of rarity, farmable via Princess Arena coins, which is good. But for a lot of people, you're actually not going to be able to get like enough Princess Arena coins to sustain yourself, especially since there are a couple of high priority targets. I would argue that it's actually optimal to reroll for her from the get go, especially considering like, you know, you're going to be looking for the Miyako, the Anna, the Kari from um, the Princess Arena coins. Anna, Anna, Anna. I guess between Anna and Hatsune, it just depends on your style. You're looking um, at a Kamikaze bomb. Anna does like a whole big AOE damage and then she loses all of her defense. So she gets chunked after that. Combining all of these magical attack AOE mages, she's like definitely one of the key mages that you need to synergize with because collectively they're known as like the mage melt comp. Just AOE, AOE, AOE magic, like rain fire on them and they can't do anything. Well, I can't do anything because I don't have either of them. But for me personally, I like playing safer. So I actually would go Hatsune over Ana, but it's up to you. For a lot of people I know rerolled for both Hatsune and Ana and like that that is that is the mage melt. That is the mage melt and you will watch other things melt. Now let's get on to Jita. She's a fantastic clan battler at this moment, probably the best physical DPS single target. A rarity, she is unfarmable, yes, but she does actually become available later in the world. I guess I put her down on a tier one because she is like, as a pure DPS, pure DPS is always prone to power creep, no matter what game you're playing, either by DPS that do more damage or by DPS that offer a good utility. It's for these reasons that she's not on the same level as like Makoto and Jun. Nozomi, honestly, Nozomi could be an honorary like one star, but for me personally, I, I don't feel like she's rare enough. And that is the only reason. So like I say in the document, she will hold your hand through all of the content in pre-con. Like she will help you in arena, in PVE, in clan battle, and like everything. She has utility in everything. She's got a taunt, a heal, a stun. She's got a, an attack buff. She's she's overloaded, baby. And especially if you don't have a solo tank like Miyako, Jun, or Pekarin, two stars at least. Pekarin, one star does not count. But yeah, if you do have a couple of these tanks, she does drop down the priority list. Not because she is trash. She's actually really, really good. But because like there are other characters that will just definitely help you round out your comp, especially so early in the game. To top it off, she's extremely farmable, especially via dungeon. So for you guys who are getting like the dungeon two times drop, like she's going to be like on your roster in the first, like I think like five or 10 days. I can't remember. Like And, and like, and like think about it. Wouldn't you want like a Makoto and a Jun and a Nozomi within like the first week or two of playing? Like that'd be pretty lit. And it's for this reason that she's a P1. Next, we got Saren. She brings a lot of cool TP battery to the table. Like, and that really helps like enabling the other units to pop off. But she's a really awkward position, right? She's sitting in the middle. But for me personally, I use her as a TP battery for Tamaki and like, so Tamaki goes off and assassinates the enemy Hatsune before she can get her ult off. Aside from that, she's like an enmity type of like attacker, but I, I don't really like that. Like, so what that means is that when she has lower HP, she will do more damage. She, she, don't, she really doesn't. <laughs> she, she really doesn't do that much damage. At the end of the day, she is a support. Next, we've got Reno and she obviously hits really hard. She has a self buff crit and then she does a big AOE physical damage. But like without the famous Reno comp to support her, she isn't actually that much. So just a quick description of the Reno comp. It's pretty much like a bunch of like TP gains. It's a bunch of like physical defense down, AOE physical defense down, and then Reno fires off a cannon and then everything dies on the other side. Outside of this, she performs well in like PVE and story mode, but not so much in the early stages of clan battle. I think like two years later, they start introducing multi-target clan battle uh, bosses. But yeah, she's not suitable for clan battle until then. So Reno is farmable via uh, battle arena shards, um, but she does compete against Tamaki and Monica, both in which I think are way more high priority. Shizuru, <laughs> a lot of people swear by Shizuru. I get it. I freaking get it. So she has big like physical damage mitigation and nullification in the forms of like a barrier and like also armor up. <laughs> and to top it off, she can also heal. But her position is kind of awkward. And like I've talked about this in my tank video, like being a tank archetype, but chilling in the middle of the team, like that's kind of weird. In general, her utility and her physical damage blocking, it's like it really, really helps. And honestly, she is a real pain in arena, but she's not like a pain like a Miyako three star is that that's pain. However, when you combine all of these features together and the fact that she's not very farmable, this ironically lands her in around like the middle of the priority lists. Maho is really, really good and it pains me to put her down here. She blinds, she heals, she has a team wide TP boost. She's really freaking good, but just not as a reroll target because she can be farmed through dungeon coins as well. And as you're hearing more and more, I'm saying a lot of units can be farmed through dungeon coins. On one side, dungeon coins are plentiful, but then on the other side, you got like really good 
good units, a whole bunch of them in the dungeon shop. It's just like compared to everybody else relative to the list, she can be farmed quite easily and she just doesn't help you too much, especially at the start. It's kind of like she just doesn't really bring that impact, especially at the start of the game. Like, you know, you got the Hatsune and the Ana versus like the Maho, right? Your Hatsune and Ana will let you dominate arena, whereas your Maho is going to let you, I don't know, blind uh, Makoto. Eventually, everyone in the mother is going to have Maho, so don't don't sweat Maho in my opinion. Ninon. So Ninon's comp is very, very similar to Reno's where it's like AoE physical damage, defense down on one side, and then bam, you like, you do the swap fan thing. But unfortunately, she stands in the middle, which is a less safe position than Reno. So I think that Ninon is, Ninon is a worse Reno. <laughs> And I might get flamed for saying that, but that's how I feel about her. She is only available through hard stages, which feels bad, and it may compel you to reroll for her, but, but she just doesn't feel critical, especially compared to the rest of the cast. I always kind of scary, especially because of her charm. It like turns your own team against each other. And if you're going for a Mage Melt comp, you would be going for Hatsune and Ana first before IO anyway. She is indeed the hardest mage to farm for and one of the hardest units to farm for because she's doing the clan battle coin one. But unfortunately, clan battle coins, you're going to be focusing all of that into Makoto. So all of these facts together just really put her in a very unfortunate circumstance where she just it's not, it's not her she's not it I can know this is a feels bad man like I really like her and I really do but she just doesn't really like have a great kit nor an identity everything that she can do somebody does better at six star she does become like a goddess but right now no yes she's only farmable via one stage but like from now until six stars you're going to be rolling a lot there is a very high chance that you might actually be spooked by Akino on top of that there is going to be a second stage that comes out and we're going to have two times shard farming like like, I can know it's just like, she's, she's, you don't, I'm sorry, you don't. You just don't. So with that being said, that's all of the three stars. So let's talk about the honorable mentions. So if you do get like, uh, for example, Makoto and Jun and Makoto and Jun in two separate accounts, you know, what are the two stars that could swing it one way or the other? I know I asked a question, but I'm about to talk about it. The biggest one for me is Miyako. Like she is the absolute queen. Like, I don't know if, if you guys have been playing a while, like Arena, it's, it's plagued with Miyako. I can't, I'm drowning in Miyako, you know, I'm drowning in pudding. She's just so strong against physical attackers. The other one that really stands out is Tamaki. She is just like assassinating like backline mages like no tomorrow. Obviously there are a lot of comps that counted this, but like for the most part, she will dominate like all of that. Otherwise you can read about the other ones, but like the main priority for me, the big swingers are probably these two and probably like any other two stars out of your waifu. <laughs> and I forgot to mention disclaimer, if you have a waifu, who just close this video and just go roll for her. The last kind of scenario is if you roll like a like a duplicate, you're 100% reroll then. Divine amulets are really good, just not at this stage of the game. You want the separate characters to actually be able to take you through content, to actually be able to make you earn gems, stuff like that. Imagine getting Makoto twice and running with it. That's actually kind of what I did. So just to recap, if I could only have one of these, I'd probably run Jun. If you're feeling lazy, go like Makoto and one of the other tier ones. Otherwise, Jun and one of the other tier ones. I reckon Jun is better than Makoto, but if you're focusing on clan battle in particular, Makoto is more important than Jun. I say Jun because Jun has so much general utility. Otherwise, like I really don't look at the rest of this. Like I really truly think that Makoto Jun, like that is an optimal start and that is the only optimal start. Like it's not like you're gonna go through Princess Connect like and not play clan battle like at all, right? <laughs> Especially when the majority of the other units are actually like farmable. Like it's, it just makes so much sense to go Makoto and Jun. So that being said, that's the end of the video. Today's secret message is, da -da 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 -da. you already know who it is. You already know who it is. If you could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. It tells me that you've actually made it to this part of the video, which is the end. It matters a lot to me, especially because I put like so many hours into developing like these spreadsheets and uh, like editing and all of that. But yeah, I think this is all pretty clear. So I think for a lot of you, now's the decision of like, you know, I got screwed by 300 rolls and just got Jun. Should I restart? And I think I probably would. But again, check out that video for more justification. That being said, this is the end of the video. I appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, follow, etc. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.